Ideal gases and the gas laws are really important for your exams. You could literally be asked for the definition of an ideal gas, and very often you're asked for questions uh, relating to the ideal gas law. By the way, I just love this picture of this dog. I don't know why I find it so funny that he has no idea what he's doing. He's doing chemistry. I don't know why I find that so funny. <laughs> anyway, um, let's talk about an ideal gas. In physics, we love to take something really complicated and reduce it to something really simple because it's a lot easier to work with. So in this case, uh, if we have a gas, a gas contains a bunch of different molecules going around, we're going to assume an ideal one is one where there's no forces between them. Because in real life, of course, they attract or repel each other and all sorts of things can happen. But uh, ideal gases, we'll just say, nah, there's no forces between them. We'll just assume they just bounce off each other like uh, billiard balls. Um, and of course, we're going to assume that it works for all pressures and all volumes and all temperatures. So this is the sort of main definition. If you're asked what is an ideal gas, say something like this. This would be really good. That's the definition. Um, now, as far as the kinetic model of gases, it's a pretty straightforward idea. This idea that these molecules in the gas, they're just these little billiard balls, like I said, just sort of bouncing around and they're just going along. And what happens, of course, they might bounce into each other. They might also bounce into the wall. So remember from the definition of temperature, that temperature is the average kinetic energy of those molecules. Remember, kinetic energy contains a speed. So really, the faster they move, the hotter the gas. Right? Because as they get faster, that's V gets bigger, and V squared is obviously still bigger, and then you have uh, kinetic energy then goes up, and that's the temperature. So faster particles, hotter gases. Slower particles, cooler gas. How slow can they go? They can go to zero, and that's why it's at absolute zero in that case. So that's the temperature. You also have to remember about uh, volume that as the volume itself of this box gets smaller, let's say you took that, that volume and you made it smaller, what's going to happen? The pressure is going to increase. So it maybe helps to talk about pressure. Uh, pressure is just a force divided by an area. Okay, that's what it is. A pressure is just force divided by the area. That's sort of a, well, that's a definition of pressure. It's even in your data booklet. So this definition then, what this tells you, by the way, pressure is, uh, we'll talk about, that's what this is right here. Pressure is just a force. So what happens, uh, divided by an area. So what happens is these molecules, as they bounce off each other and they bounce off the wall, when they bounce off the wall, they change momentum. And because of that, that means they're going to uh, they're gonna impart a force to that wall because of that definition of impulse. Right? As you change momentum, there's an impulse, and an impulse is a change in force. Well, it's a force times a change in time. But So basically, you're going to have a force. They're going to push against that wall. And depending on the size of that wall, then that can tell you about the pressure. Obviously, if there's less area, then the pressure will increase. Uh, so that hopefully is going to make some sense to you. So that's really important, I think. Now let's go to uh, the definition. Uh, ooh, boy, I need to change this right here. This is not number of molecules. I just realized I have a mistake here. I don't want that. So it's a number of, I just got to change this right here because it's really important here. It's a number of, not molecules, moles. There we go, that should look a lot better. There we go. So the ideal gas law goes like this. The equation is as follows. It goes PV equals nRT. This is the equation you need. This is on your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize it, but it's really important. So first we'll talk about each of the different players in here, right? So the pressure, do you remember what units we use for pressure? So P here is pressure, it's not momentum, uh, like from uh, mechanics. This is pressure, which is in pascals. Then we have the volume. A volume is uh, length times width times height, so that's in meters cubed. N is just a number of moles, and we'll talk about that in another video, what exactly uh, this means. But uh, this is a number of moles. It, it relates to the amount of material you have. Uh, then R is just a constant. This big R is just a constant number. You don't have to memorize it. You can look it up. It's this. And finally, you have temperature. And temperature can be measured in degrees Celsius or it can be in Kelvin. Uh, that's all you need, really, for all this here. So this is the ideal gas law. Um, you could be asked lots of, there's lots of examples of questions that go like this. And the good news is they're not so bad. It's usually just fill in whatever numbers you need. Like they'll say like, okay, you have a pressure of this and a temperature of this. What's the volume? Uh, as long as you know how many moles there are. Or they'll tell you the moles and the temperature and the volume. Say, what's the pressure? So in this case, these are fairly straightforward seeming, um, but it's still really important to think about. 
And actually, I have a true story to tell you. Uh, you might find this uh, funny or gross or I don't know what, but it's a true story. Um, at some point, uh, I used to be in the military, and uh, then we we're doing our pilot training, and they would put us in this big giant box to simulate high altitude. So what they do is they'd put us all in this box here, uh, and they give us oxygen masks, so we're sort of connected to some O2. So we're all getting oxygen here, so we can breathe. And what they would do is they would simulate um, going up at high altitude. And to go to high altitude, what they would do, they would lower the pressure. So imagine then they took the pressure, made the pressure go down. And they would sort of see how you can do, and they do all these funny tests. Like they would have us play patty cake with each other, for example, and test our uh, hand-eye coordination. Um, so this is all really funny stuff. But the thing I noticed that, that struck me the most is the moment I stepped into this room, I thought, God, it smells like it's like someone just like had an accident in their pants. Like it smelled like the worst farts ever. And I thought, like, what happened in this room before me? What's really funny is that as soon as they turned on this machine to simulate high altitude, I knew exactly what had happened. And I sort of forgot about this equation, right? I was just worried about, you know, passing my test, so I wanted to get through all this, right? So turns out when you lower the pressure, if the temperature remains the same, lower the pressure. Do you know what happens to volume? Volume goes up. And you're made of gases. You have gases in you. So imagine this. They lower the pressure in the room. Of course, your ears pop and all these weird things happen, right? So you sort of, you know, you kind of adjust your ears. But as they lower the pressure, all the gases in you want to go out because the volume wants to expand, right? If pressure goes down, volume wants to go up. So that meant as soon as they turned on this machine and they lowered the pressure, I was burping and farting like crazy because all your gases want to go out. So then I was like, now I know why this machine stinks so bad. <laughs> So I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, by the way, it looks like it says cork, and I don't mean cork here. Do I? Oh, God, what have I done? Um, I just meant to say C or K. So PV equals NRT, yes. Now we have the gas laws. These are ones that are not addressed as often, but if it comes up, it's really important to know this. So constant volume, we have a, a gas law for this. If you have constant volume, that means V equals constant, right? And now I'm just going to remind you about that equation, PV equals NRT. So if V is constant, look carefully at this equation. Then. If V is constant, that means we essentially make it one or you know, we leave it the same. Can you see then that P, because we essentially, we ignore the N and the R, they're just constant numbers as well. So V is constant, N is constant, R is constant. Can you see that P is just proportional to T? So I'm gonna say that P is proportional to T. That means if I did a graph of pressure versus temperature, then I could get it depends on the now uh, temperature. If I graph this with Kelvin or Celsius, so that's going to sort of that's going to make a difference if I graph this in Kelvin or Celsius. Let's assume it's in Kelvin. That means I can have zero, right? I can have zero temperature here. So in this case, so here, let's just say it'll go something like if it's proportional, it'll be a linear graph. It'll be something like that. So what that means is, as uh, temperature goes up, what happens then? Pressure goes up. Right? That's the important thing here. I think this is a key thing. So it's, yes, temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Charles's law, which is where uh, something is, uh, the pressure is constant. I mean, in thermodynamics, we have special rules for all these. And here we can say this is isovolumetric, and we can say this is isobaric, and this is isothermal. But uh, I mean, it's, it's, what you really need for the IB is just you need to know that pressure is constant. And if the pressure is constant, let's look at this same equation. If P is constant, that means, can you see that V is proportional to T? So the volume is proportional to temperature. So that means I can do a graph of volume and temperature in Kelvin, and I could have something like that. So again, as temperature goes up, I'll just put arrows, right? Uh, v goes up. So that means higher temperature means a larger volume. Finally, we have Boyle's law where T is constant because see we're making each of these three main players here constant. So if the temperature is constant, let's look what happens. You make T constant, that means P times V is some constant. If that makes any sense, what you can do then, you can take P then is going to equal one over V, well, some constant times, you know, something times it. Right, because I get P on its own, that means I got to divide the V. So what I can say then is a pressure is proportional to one over the volume. And that's going to be a little bit weird. So this means that if I do a graph of pressure versus volume, I'm not going to get a linear function. Do you remember what the graph of 1 over x looks like? It goes like this. So that's the graph. So that's a weird one. Okay, so just so you know, that's what happens with these sort of, what these are called isotherms.
and thermodynamics we call these isotherms. But just so you know, this is the main theory that you needed from the gas laws.